So team coverage continues. We take you to Atlantic Beach where Richard Devane is live. Yeah, Richard, we certainly see it's it's wet out there, maybe a little bit of wind, but tell us about conditions out there. Yeah, we're beginning to actually see a little bit more as uh, more daylight come. We've been walking around with our flashlights trying to be very safe, uh, Ashley. Dan, we can tell you that basically we see a lot of uh, tree damage from just standing here. We can tell you that the beach is without power, at least in the area that we're standing right now. There is a lot of debris. I see a tree down right over my shoulder, right over my other shoulder. There's some siding that has been ripped off of a building. We do know that there's a boat docking area right next to us where a lot of boats have been dry docked. Some of those we've seen some siding fly off of that area. So there is a lot of damage. Of course, as we get more daylight and as people venture out will be able to assess the damage more as far as people we can tell you the island is relatively calm a lot of people had evacuated earlier in the week when they were told to do so we've just seen a couple of people out and about late last night but even the group one group that we saw they had a concrete house so they stayed inside they said they, they wanted to ride it out uh, that wasn't a smart thing people saying to, that the authorities have told us that they, that they did but they say at least they're going to be inside the house when it comes time for the storm right now if things are looking a good L less rain is coming the wind gusts are not as strong but we can tell you at this time we'll have a better idea of the actual damage when more daylight comes that's the story right here from atlantic beach guys we'll send it back to you all right richard devane thank you about three hours south in moorhead city well, hurricane dorian still moving up the east coast as a category one hurricane craig's back with an update on its track
13 News Now is in storm mode. Hurricane Dorian is finally here. We've been talking about it all week long. It's making its way up the North Carolina coast as we speak. Now overnight it did weaken. It's mm -hmm. now a category one storm and right now there are nearly 200 closings as are posted on 13 news now dot com. All right, we have team coverage from Virginia to the Outer Banks. Tim Pandagis is in the mobile weather lab. You see him on the left of the screen there. They're making their way to Elizabeth City. Allie Weatherton's in Nags Head with the latest on there and then Megan Shin is in Virginia Beach where evacuations are underway. Now we'll check in with all of them in just a few minutes, but first let's check in with meteorologist Craig Moeller with an update on Dorian. All right guys, six o'clock update still here with northeast movement 14 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds are right around 90 and we have had gusts up around 115 or so. So we are still looking at very powerful winds, especially southern outer banks, but the winds increasing northern outer banks, northeast North Carolina and yes, here in Hampton Roads as well. We're going to talk about this and I want to get into the radar and I'll really break this down, but you can see the forecast basically bringing that center of circulation right over Buxton. I believe that the uh, northwest side of this system is going to move right over Ocracoke and right over Hatteras Island. So you're going to see that with the radar, how it's tracking along. It will move off to the northeast and it will continue off to the northeast, accelerating away from our area. Big improvements coming up later on as we go tonight. So much rain over eastern North Carolina. This was never in question. We knew there was going to be a lot of rain there. The question we've had was how far would the heavy rain extend back out to the west across uh, Hampton Roads and areas to the northwest? And we knew there'd be a pretty good cut line. We're seeing that a lot of the heaviest rain still offshore, kind of wrapping back to the coast, and the winds will increase as well. Let me show you where the eye is. This is the center of it. You can see Ocracoke basically right now uh, straddling that northern part of the eye wall right there that heaviest rain wrapping around there's your eye and it's moving towards Buxton so the rain really intensifying right now at Buxton but the heavier stuff the more violent part of the storm near the eye is actually coming your way across Ocracoke right now and I just put a quick measuring stick to uh, Cape Hatteras here the point about 20 miles so as this is moving off to the northeast at 14 you figure this area will get very close to that within the next hour and 15 minutes or so hour and a half somewhere in there it will be right over there the eye will be and then the backside it'll take another probably hour and a half two hours or so beyond that so we're looking at this coming over this as we were saying for days leading up to it right around eight o'clock or so that's looking pretty good for Hatteras with that center maybe a little bit either side of that but then it moves off to the northeast so across our area we've got this heavy rain rolling towards the coast and there have been waves of rain continuing to move in that includes Areas down around Nags Head. Very quickly, I want to talk winds. We've got sustained winds right now picking up 20 to 30 miles per hour. Several areas around the coast in uh, Hampton Roads down to the south. Stronger sustained winds. Tropical storm force winds sustained at duck and gusts. We see those gusts starting to pick up Norfolk with a gust of 38 miles per hour, a 37 mile per hour gust at Oceana, Langley at 36, and now we're getting gusts around 56 at the Coast Guard Air Station and also at Duck. So winds picking up this morning and we're going to deal with that major tidal flooding later this afternoon. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Craig. Our team coverage continues in North Carolina. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is there. She is monitoring conditions in Nags Head. Allie, about an hour ago, you said wind gusts were the worst you'd seen them. What's it like now? Well, the wind gusts are continuing to get stronger and stronger, which means Hur Hurricane Dorian is definitely on its way here. You can probably hear the wind actually picking up through my microphone. That's how strong these wind gusts are now. Like about 30 minutes ago, the sun just started to come up, so you can probably barely see the ocean. I can see it. It's very, very choppy out there. Conditions are expected to get worse here as Hurricane Doring inches closer and closer here to the Outer Banks. Now, earlier today, this morning, about 2 o'clock this morning, we walked outside. We thought the wind gusts were bad then. It's continuing to get worse. I mentioned this in the last live shot is I, we see a swimming pool. It's actually right to the left of me. The, the uh, water is just flowing out of the swimming pool. It kind of looks like a wave pool. That's how strong these winds are pushing the water out. Now, high tide is not expected in until later this afternoon. So we're probably going to expect the waves to push up here to the to the balcony. So kind of that's what we're seeing right now, guys.
All right, Allie, Craig Moeller here. I really appreciate the updates out there. Can you tell us a little bit about the nature of the wind? Like, have you been seeing the stronger gusts with bands of rain or has it been kind of random? What can you tell us? Well, we've kind of seen sustained winds start. They are about maybe for five, 10 minutes. And then when it seems like it's starting to calm down, that's when the rain actually starts to come in. Then the rain stops, the wind kind of d dies down and then it picks back up in maybe five, 10 minutes after that. All right, great information there, Allie. We want you to stay safe and we appreciate you taking the time. Allie and photojournalist Stephen Wozniak been on the Outer Banks all week long bringing you coverage. We certainly appreciate that update from them. And emergency managers in the Tar Heel State say it's too late to evacuate. Right now they just need a shelter in place in North Carolina. There's also curfews in effect in some areas. Dare County has one for everywhere except Kitty Hawk. You can't go outside until noon. Hyde County had one for Ocracoke until 6. A ban on alcohol sales also in place. It was 6 this morning. And Perquimans also had one that lifted at 6. Ashley? Well, Dan, right now, Sandbridge residents are under a mandatory evacuation order. So let's head to 13 News Now reporter Megan Shen. Megan is outside Kellum High School in Virginia Beach. And Megan, Kellum, uh, Kellum High School is one of the shelters for the city. That's correct, Ashley, and people stayed here overnight after getting that mandatory evacuation order for the area of Sandbridge and the rain out here right now is just coming down a little bit more. The winds are still not too bad, but of course the officials for the city of Virginia Beach were mainly concerned about the heavy rainfall and the potential for flooding in this area, which is something neighbors see quite often. Of course, all this due to Hurricane Dorian heading north towards Hampton Roads, at least. And of course, we're talking about a little bit more of people being inside here. Those neighbors we spoke with yesterday say that they heed these orders. They take it very seriously as the city gives it to them. We feel we're in danger. We're going to move. If they say it's mandatory to get out of here, we're not going to question it. And there's a second shelter over at Old Donation Center. And you guys, you can bring your pets to the shelter here at Kellum if you need to bring your pets. This is a pet friendly area and we have a mandatory evacuation order once again for Sandbridge and also a voluntary evacuation order for people in Zone A and low lying areas around Virginia Beach. Live in Virginia Beach, Megan Shen, 13 News Now. Thank you, Megan. Looking live on the roads. This is from the Mobile Weather Lab. And you see they've come across a road that is underwater. Tim Panday just has an update on what he's seen in North Carolina just ahead.
morning. Welcome back to 13 News Now Daybreak. We have special storm mode coverage of Hurricane Dorian, and we're getting some light now on the ocean front. You can see the waves pretty rough out there. Not a lot of activity at the ocean front as you wouldn't think you know here it is we've got a tropical storm coming in as far as the conditions go hurricane force conditions southern outer banks right now we're getting reports of that and i'm going to talk to you some more about what's going on down there in just a moment 76 at the airport rain right now north East winds sustained at 23. We've seen winds sustained at the airport up around 30 to 33 miles per hour with gusts up to tropical storm force already up in Norfolk. This system right now still rolling to the northeast 14 miles per hour. It is a category one hurricane. It weakened a little bit overnight. Thank goodness, but uh, it is going to continue to move off to the northeast. That center coming by Buxton and Hatteras. Right now, the eye wall is over Ocracoke and it is continuing to move along. So this area getting hit very hard and we'll zoom in on the radar coming up in just a moment. Broad view here. You can see the circulation. There it is moving along quickly. You remember the models for a long time were saying that eye would be very close to Hatteras at 8 o'clock. I'd say they've done a really good job in handling that. They started to speed up, slow down, and play a little bit with it just, you know, yesterday a little bit, but consistently it had been putting it right around 8 o'clock at Hatteras. That's going to work out really, really good. You can see heavy rain rotating back towards the coast. We're seeing more of the rain filling in now across the eastern shore. There's even heavier stuff set to roll into Accomack and Northampton. Down across the south side, we've seen squalls come through with some gustier winds, more rain. It's been heaviest the rain down across North Carolina, and we still have very heavy rain yet to come. We've got uh, Tim Pandagis out in the mobile weather SUV. He's going to have an update for us in a moment. Stay tuned for that. Right now, the heaviest rain south of Elizabeth City. We've got some bands rolling in around Alligator. You can see back across mainland there some pretty heavy stuff. But then you get down to Buxton and Rodanthe. I just talked to a buddy of mine who is riding this thing out in his property at Salvo. And we'll take a little closer look at that right there. You can see how intense that rain is. His name's John Rudis. He's a retired Chesapeake firefighter. Many folks in the uh, first responding community know of John Rudis. He served on uh, Task Force 2, uh, and he's just done an incredible job. He's got a, a group down there that are working to support each other, and he's on standby to kind of help out a little bit down there as well. But he was saying, Craig, the house is rocking right now, and he says he had yet to go through a storm feeling what he's feeling down there. So we'll be hearing more from him as our extended coverage continues past 7 o'clock. As we take a look down across Ocracoke, again, these heavy rains coming across Ocracoke, approaching Buxton, there's the eye right there. So you can see uh, parts of Ocracoke actually in the eye and this heavy band rolling towards Hatteras. Things getting rough down there for sure. I'm going to talk about the future cast and what's going on in just a moment. Let's get another update from Phil Townsend, who's in the newsroom. Hey, Craig, yes, I have your latest storm mode alert. Let's go to Virginia Beach. Police there say because of storm activity, their non-emergency line is down right now, so you'll need to call 911 for both emergency and non-emergency situations. We're also still seeing a lot of power outages. Over 2,000 people in Virginia Beach don't have power right now. Most of those issues out in Sandbridge in Chesapeake, you see 3,600 there. It's actually down to 1,400 right now. That's good news for people in Chesapeake and in Norfolk. Just 700 people without power right now. We're going to track these numbers very closely. I'll bring you another update in about 30 minutes. All right, Phil, thank you. And conditions are getting rough both on land and also at sea, and that's why the Coast Guard is warning boaters that the water is actually one of the worst places you can be right now, especially because they may not be able to respond to your call for help. Now, most of the search and rescue vessels, they're no longer even in Portsmouth. Some are up in Annapolis, some are in the James River, and our SAR capabilities and our ability to respond on the water has been greatly diminished. And boat owners, they already know those vessels need to be tied down securely for this storm. Well, Norfolk-based Navy ships also got underway ahead of Dorian. A lot of sailors and pilots left earlier this week. Now, some ships are staying here because they're undergoing maintenance, but the Navy is taking extra steps to secure those ships as well. The F-22 Raptors and T-38 Talons from Langley Air Force Base are riding out the storm in Ohio. So with that being said, let's uh, get another check of the forecast, uh, certainly here and as Dorian moves up the coast, Craig. All right, and as we go through the morning, the 
impacts from Dorian are going to shift around a little bit. We're going to start watching the rain shield move. We're going to start clearing certain areas from heavy rain. Other areas will still get hit with heavy rain. We're also going to be monitoring changes in the winds. We'll check in with Rochelle in just a moment. One thing that we're really concerned with the tide levels and we are still expecting major tidal flooding this afternoon and it's kind of one of those things where we're looking at this stuff and we're seeing the winds coming in and raising the water level. So we're going to watch for this, but at this point we're anticipating major tidal flooding 6.7 feet. That is the forecast high tide from the uh, forecasters at the weather service. We'll pass that along. Notice the high tide coming this afternoon. After that, much lower water. We came through with just basically nuisance type flooding this morning at the high tide. We knew that wasn't going to be a problem. And the next one following this afternoon's high tide also not expected to create any widespread issues at all. But the one this afternoon, that's the one we're concerned with at Sewell's Point, and that's the official measuring stick for uh, Norfolk and for most of Hampton Roads. We really work off that up in Yorktown. Also expecting major tidal flooding this afternoon at 5.6, the water level and at Duck Pier 7.7. .7. Again, this afternoon's high tide coming a little bit before three uh, expected to be major. So here we go. Look at the eye there rolling again. The eye wall, the northern eye wall over Ocracoke. The eye itself, actually a little bit of land, I think, within the eye there along Ocracoke and then heading up towards Hatteras and Buxton. We've got very heavy rain right now working across Avon and uh, around Salvo. I was showing some of the different communities down there just a moment ago. Heavy rain offshore working back. Notice how much lighter it is here. Some of our viewers out to the west thinking, hey, this isn't that bad. Remember, we were saying half an inch to an inch out towards I-95, one to five inches potentially in here, probably on the lower end as this stuff pivots around a little bit, the heavy concentration of rain closer to the coast. That we knew, we weren't sure how much we would see and how far west it would go. And I don't want you to drop your guard just yet out to the west because this area may expand a little bit if this starts to take on some extra tropical characteristics as it kind of pivots around and moves offshore. We'll be watching that. Again, the center of circulation. <laughs> My Apple Watch loves to interrupt me during my forecast. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so the rain rolls along, and uh, we've got that eye again just now approaching Buxton and those heavy rains working to Hatteras and up towards Rodanthe right now. Wanchi's very intense rainfall. Avon actually catching a little bit of a break. So here's the forecast again. We're going to see that pivot and the change, but we're really worried about the winds. And with a look at that, here's Rochelle Peer. Good morning, everybody. Continuing to watch those wind speeds. Sustained winds 30, 40 miles per hour for areas like Norfolk, 35, 32 miles per hour right now in Currituck at 43 miles per hour in Elizabeth City and 47 right now in Duck. That's just the sustained winds. Those gusts, of course, even higher. We've got quite a bit of red showing up in there for those gusts. 48 mile per hour gusts right now in Currituck up to 46 mile per hour gusts right now in Norfolk. 60 mile per hour for those wind gusts right now in Elizabeth City and the gust in Duck at 54 miles per hour. The buoys now reporting at Hatteras 60 miles per hour. The buoy just off the coast of Hatteras, 76 mile per hour, still with those 20 foot foot, 24 foot surfs at this hour. But again, Craig was just showing how close that eye wall is to the area of Hatteras. So showing off this uh, wind forecast for Williamsburg, not too much. We do have a chance for seeing some of those uh, tropical storm force winds. One of the commuter puddles is bringing that into uh, Williamsburg a little bit farther down toward the south in Norfolk. We have a slightly better chance of seeing that tropical storm force wind speed and definitely the wind gust, which will be higher than that moving into the Mermaid City. As we move into North Carolina, that chance only increases, especially for the the tropical storm force winds. This is for Elizabeth City, where we are having those 60 mile per hour wind gusts right now. We haven't even seen um, probably the worst of that quite yet. And then toward Hatteras, we're watching tropical storm force winds and possibly hurricane force winds. Certainly hurricane force gusts are on the way, and we have pretty good agreement with the computer models coming in here with the potential for those stronger wind speeds later on today, Craig. All right, Rochelle, thank you for that. I mentioned the future cast and how things are going to play out. We're seeing again that shift as it moves farther northeast. The uh, RPM model that we're basing this future cast off of a little overblown on the rain out that far to the west. That's OK. The general thinking is right that we're going to see heavier amounts of rain near the coast, lighter amounts farther inland as we go through the afternoon and into the evening. Eventually, 
all that rain pulls away, but it's still going to be those winds coming in from the northwest. It'll push the water around and we could have some additional issues. We're concerned with sound side flooding and the tides coming up here around the lower part of the Chesapeake Bay as well with the north and northwest winds coinciding with the high tide by this evening as we head through the evening hours, whatever's left of the rain gone. It tapers off and we're going to see clearing overnight more sunshine for tomorrow. So really looking forward to that. All right, so that is a uh, sky view that needs to have the camera irised very clearly. We'll take you to the ocean front and you can see the view there again. Rough surf, obviously uh, not a time for folks to venture out and play in that water. 76 degrees winds are north northeast now at Norfolk International. The winds have just ticked back up 35 miles per hour sustained winds. So we're almost we're getting close. You get up for 30 to near 40. You're talking tropical storm force winds. Not quite there, but close as far as sustained winds. Of course, we'll see some higher gusts. Chances for those stronger gusts down into the northern part of the Outer Banks. Southern Outer Banks even stronger. We will find hurricane force uh, winds and wind gusts down that way. Tonight's low near 69. Improvements coming up tomorrow. 84. Mostly sunny. It's going to be warm and muggy, but much nicer weather as we need to clean up some of the debris and tree limbs and different things like that that fall. All right, Tim, you've been down towards Elizabeth City and you're reporting a lot of flooding down there. Tremendous amount of rain. Yeah, Craig, we're rocking and rolling down here now down in Elizabeth City. We're at the corner of Flora Street and Riverside Avenue and you can see it is impassable right now. This is not unusual for this area. There's a high water sign posted over there, so this happens often, but the water's all the way up on this house, all the way up to the garage doors. Pasquotank River is over on this side, more homes lining that, and you see this house here kind of right on an island with water completely surrounding it there. I heard Rochelle say that we had 60 mile per hour winds down here in Elizabeth City. I tell you, I believe it. These these trees are bending and bowing in every which direction here, and these gusts are quite high. In fact, sustained when they're not gusting, I'd say probably close to tropical storm force easily here. And of course, coming here comes the gust right now. It is extremely windy. That rain, not as heavy as it was as we were traveling here. We encountered a lot of debris in the roadways on 168 to get here. A few roadways were closed because of trees down, and we even see some branches floating in the, wa in the uh, flood water a little further down here on Flora Street. So this is certainly a passable right now. It's only going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. And once those winds turn around, we'll likely see it backflow out into the Pasco Tank River there too. But uh, Craig, that's the latest here. I mean, we're getting that rain, we're getting that wind, and certainly uh, going to be a rough next couple of hours. Tim, I know as you were driving around down there, you'd seen a tree down on one of the roads. How has it generally been? Uh, wind gusts bringing down any limbs or anything like that? What else have you seen down there? Yeah, we saw the Sheriff's Department uh, kind of block off a big tree. They were trying to move it on their own, but they, it was just too large to, and they had another deputy arrive with a chainsaw, and they started removing it. It was probably like a 10-inch you know, 10, 10 diameter tree. Uh, looked like an entire tree that had to come on down. We've seen numerous of those, and there's likely going to be more with those winds getting a little bit stronger as Dorian tracks a little bit closer to the area before it exits. But, uh, yeah, those winds are doing a number, and certainly a lot of power outages, too. Uh, thankfully, around here, we're not seeing too many huge trees down, just some limbs here and there. But, I mean, as you can hear, the gusts coming in again, just getting stronger each minute that passes. So, Tim, we, we love your perspective down there. Real quick, uh, two things. How have the winds been? Have they been kind of squally? And also, what's the sky like overhead now that it's starting to brighten up? Uh, completely overcast here. Uh, you know, we got some pretty, you know, the winds, I would say they're getting more uh, more consistent here. I mean, this gust right here is probably the strongest we've seen so far since we've been here. I mean, can you hear? We got shingles flying off the house behind us here, and the wind is just, you can probably hear it right now with that microphone. I mean, it is coming on in off the Pasco Tank River right now, and there's actually some tree branches coming on down on that far side of the road. So, on that yeah, note, we're going to head back into the storm, storm mode vehicle and uh, move to a different direction. Thank you so much, Tim. Most importantly, you stay safe out there, all right? Rick Dillo with you. We need our crews taken care. I know you will. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Our team of the most trusted meteorologists in Hampton Roads tracking Hurricane Dorian. Search and rescue efforts are still underway in the Bahamas, though. We head back there. Hundreds of people still unaccounted for after the storm. Dorian hit the Abaco Islands as a Category 5 earlier this week, and then it hovered over Grand Bahama for more than 24 hours as a Category 4. 
30 people have been confirmed dead. Officials expect that number to keep climbing over the next few days. You know, Dorian also caused widespread damage along the coast of the Carolinas. It hit Charleston, South Carolina as a Category 2, leaving 250,000 people without power. Check this out. There were down power lines littering the streets. Part of this roof of the church was ripped off by strong winds. More video out of South Carolina. It's a look at the rough surf in Myrtle Beach. And finally, this video shows the aftermath of a tornado in Emerald Isle, North North Carolina. Another was confirmed just about a half hour away. So we will continue to keep an eye on the damage and uh, we will send it over to you now, Ashley. Okay, Dan. Well, Madison Kimbrough is in Norfolk where another tree is down. We'll get an update from her after the break. Reports of storm damage rolling in this morning. Madison Kimbrough is in Norfolk on Kingston Avenue. That's where a pretty large tree fell overnight. Madison, you've gotten a better look in the last half hour. What's it looking like? Dan and Ashley, look at this. Now we have some natural lighting where we can really show you the tree and the wind is definitely picking up. Take a look at this. This is the tree that collapsed and totally split from this tree right here. At first glance, it kind of looks like the tree was uprooted. Now I'm going to move very carefully down here so I can show you that this car was totally destroyed by the tree and you can see the bark and everything destroyed in its path. You can also see tree destruction on the ground. We talked to Dominion Power who mentioned how this roadway is not going to be cleared anytime soon. They're thinking probably sometime tomorrow. So people that drive this way or live in this neighborhood are really going to have to deal with this mess until then. Also, power hasn't been on for a lot of these homes in this area. About 800 people are without power as of now. So only time will tell if Dorian really makes even more of an impact than it already has. Sending it back to the news desk. Like I said, this is an insane visual scene. 13 News Now. Okay, Madison, thank you. And 13 News Now, we'll be right back with more storm coverage. We're back in one minute.
Well, Hurricane Dorian is here and we are bringing you special extended coverage. The rain and the wind starting to pick up, but the worst is still yet to come. So we're talking major flooding and strong winds out there. Our team of reporters to spread out from North Carolina to the peninsula. We'll get to them soon, but first we want to get to Craig with an update on Dorian's track. I'm in contact with a gentleman down in Salvo that is uh, riding this thing out from his house there. And he said, Craig, I've not been through a storm where he's felt the winds, you know, shake his house like this before and that eye really getting closer and closer. Here's a 7 a.m. update and we are constantly you'll see us moving around in the studio and uh, getting different updates in certain areas. It's really been something else. Some of the reports coming in right now. The center of the storm 30 miles west southwest of Cape Hatteras tracking to the northeast at 14. So you can see within the next couple of hours the center over Hatteras and the wall the northern uh, eye wall northwest eye wall moving Moving over that before then. So within the next hour or so that is going to happen. It's it's almost happening right now. So we're getting there as we take a look. The winds have been steady at about 90 miles per hour maximum sustained. They haven't fluctuated up or down much uh, during the morning hours, but it is going to continue moving off to the northeast and we may see the wind field expand a little bit on the backside. Sometimes as these systems move over some of that warmer Gulf Stream water, they can ramp up a little bit of intensity, maybe tick up a bit and we see the winds increasing. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. There's a look at the eye again. Hatteras right there. So the center of circulation here, the center of the hurricane, still about 30 miles west southwest of Hatteras. More heavy rain wrapping back towards Virginia Beach and for Norfolk. And we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Notice Buxton right now seeing some of the very, very heavy rain. The eye just off to the southwest of that coming through Rodanthe, also dealing with some pretty intense rainfall there. So that's a look at kind of the distance of what's going on. Now, here's what I want to prepare folks in Virginia Beach for. We've been talking about the conditions getting a little bit squallier. Look at how heavy this rain is just offshore and it is wrapping back towards the coast. So we're going to watch that. We've we've been uh, going and uh, continuing to monitor these squalls, these heavier bands that are working back towards the coast. So that will continue to be something that we pay super close attention to. We're also watching the winds and Rochelle Peart has a look at that. Definitely continuing to watch those winds are going to crank up as we move through the next couple of hours. Do you want to tell you about a report out of Cedar Island? They had a wind gust there of 96 miles per hour and in Hatteras they have had a wind gust over 60 miles per hour. Currently some of the sustained winds across our area 24 in Norfolk 35 right now in Currituck. As we talk about those wind gusts of course in miles per hour 44 right now in Norfolk we can hear that rain battering down on the ceiling here on the roof rather of 13 news now 45 miles per hour for the gust currently in Currituck up to 56 miles per hour for the gust in Elizabeth City. Moyock and Duck both gusting at 45 miles per hour. Watch a pre gusting at 38 miles per hour. Definitely starting to shake some things across here in Hampton Roads. Talking about the buoys, however, 66 miles per hour right now at Hatteras. We are dealing with that buoy just off the coast of Hatteras. 69 miles per hour, 20 foot, 24 foot waves there at this hour and possibly could be cranking up even more. Do you want to talk about some wind reports? These are coming out of the office in Moorhead City, North Carolina. Frisco 69 miles per hour, Buxton 62 miles per hour, Oregon Inlet at 61 miles per hour so far. These are as of 645. Kill Devil Hills 52 mile per hour wind and then Nags Head 48 miles per hour. We do have reporters across uh, Virginia and North Carolina. We'll get some reports out of them coming up a little bit later. For now, Craig, back to you. All right, and we're going to continue to see those those wind reports ticking up with stronger winds as this gets closer and eventually comes just northeast of Hatteras. That's when we expect the strongest winds later this morning and even into the afternoon. Powerful winds and then that wind shift coming around as we mentioned. That's where we'll have additional concerns. Sound side flooding and our tide levels and I just checked Sewell's point the water level, the forecast level and what's actually observed right now. We're about 2.2 feet above the forecasted amount and that is going to continue to grow with these winds continuing to drive the water into the bay. Now these heavy areas of rain approaching Virginia Beach. So we're going to continue to uh, see this on the increase and it looks like it's going to be one of those deals where the coastal areas tremendous amounts of rain as this all rain starts to pivot and it takes on a more north to south flow right now. It's still kind of wrapping back from the uh, east and from the southeast back towards the coast. But as the system pulls off to the northeast that pivot 
it will occur and we're going to get a prolonged period of heavier rain and that's why we have the additional flooding concerns with those rains four to eight inches. We heard from Tim Panday just down around Elizabeth City. They had some flooding issues down there already and we'll continue to check in for more on that. Much lighter amounts out to the west. The winds again the big issue uh, as far as the inland areas not too bad right now sustained winds but the gusts have been stronger and look at our sustained winds near the coast. We're now looking at upper 30s to near 40 so getting close to tropical storm force sustained gusts higher than that as you can see uh, down around Elizabeth City gusts up around 56 and those winds expected to pick up. Take a quick look at the forecast here and this is based on the GFS model. Just want to give you a feel kind of what we've already been looking at Norfolk with gusts to 42 miles per hour stronger gusts down at Hatteras but as we take you over the coming hours we're going to see those gusts really increasing as we head towards midday and the storm system starts to pull off a little bit more to the northeast and it has a clearer shot some of those stronger winds coming back to the coast. So as we go towards midday we could see gusts up around 60 miles per hour. Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Elizabeth City still at that level. Edenton we could see some strong gusts down around the sound so we're going to be watching that. Hatteras obviously uh, on the back side there maybe catching a little bit of a break but more squalls could come back around and as those winds shift to the northwest this is where we're so concerned with the sound side flooding those strong winds through the afternoon so we're continuing to track this coming through. We're going to deal with a very, very raw day with wind and rain. Worse at the coast, not as bad inland, but for the coastal areas, we're going to deal with this and it's going to be a, a pretty much a day long event with improvements coming as we get into the evening. So that's a look at the forecast uh, as far as the winds go. Wind and rain through the day, guys. Big improvements. So later tonight, back to you. Our extended team coverage starts now on the Outer Banks and Jacqueline Lee is live in Kill Devil Hills. And Jacqueline, you've been out there for a while. How have conditions changed out there and what are you seeing right now? Clearly a lot of water on the road. <laughs> Yeah, well, Ashley and Dan, the conditions out here have changed drastically. I will say it's sprinkling right now. It's it's a little windy, but not much. This is a huge pivot from just a few hours ago. All of last night, all of this morning, the wind was just gusting. You had the rain pounding against the windows at the hotel. Um, so we're right now we're on NC 12 in Kell Devil Hills. This is the extent of the conditions that we're seeing just a few inches of water pooling on the side of the road. I'll say we were surprised uh, this morning just seeing this is about it. I I mean, we started in we started in Nags Head. We drove along um, South Croatan Highway up towards Kill Devil Hills. There was no flooding, no roads closed. We pivoted over here to NC 12 and this is about it. So let's turn over here. Let's talk about the houses. Let's talk about homeowners. We've been here the last few days. A lot of them decided to stick it out. They said Hurricane Dorian, they're not expecting it to be a big deal. And I will say standing out here in these conditions, this is living up to their expectations. A lot of people said that uh, they're going to ride it out because they don't think this is as big of a deal as what officials are saying. Now, while I would never advocate following, not following what officials say, um, this is, I think the conditions out here kind of explain why a lot of locals decided not to leave. Now, I will say, Dare County officials said, do not, you know, come outside. You have a curfew extended until noon, um, except for in Kitty Hawk. But other than that, this is what we're seeing here. Um, we're going to we, we just talked to one man who ventured outside. He was saying that we're here outside Jolly Roger and this is the only restaurant that typically stays open during storms and it's closed. So we're going to talk with him in a second. We'll have more from him coming up a little bit later this morning. So for now, I'm Jacqueline Lee in Kill Devil Hills. Back to you. Yeah, interested to hear what he says in his decision to close today. Jacqueline, I've been following your coverage down there for a couple days. I know yesterday you talked to a couple who's been married for five decades. They're choosing to ride out the storm. Oh, I know. What, what was their decision behind that? Walk us through the thought process. Yeah, they said they've they've experienced nor'easters, they've experienced hurricanes, they've lived here in the Outer Banks for 15 years. They said the only way they would ever leave is if it was like a category four or five direct hit. But other than that, they said as long as you tie down the furniture, you stock up on the food, you fill the bathtub full of water in case the water gets cut off, they said they're going to be fine. Right there, some good advice there from some folks riding out the storm. That was Jacqueline Lee in Kill Devil Hills. Let's move now to Virginia Beach. Reporter Evan Watson is at the oceanfront. Evan, tell us what you're seeing down there. 
Yeah, just in the short time that I've been here, the conditions <laughs> have really peaked up. Obviously, the sand coming off of the beach here, you can easily get sandblasted if you're on the boardwalk or down farther in the sand. This is the Rudy Inlet at the ocean front. Uh, the, the, uh, the water and the rain coming in heavily from the ocean direction here, uh, coming in this way. And then if we turn just a little bit this way, you can see kind of the waves crashing in. We were down here yesterday and the water wasn't going up that high up the beach over there. In fact, where the water is right now, there were people uh, uh, fishing over there with the fishing lines. So uh, the conditions definitely uh, increasing out here at the ocean front. Waves crashing onto the rocks when you look over there towards the Rudy Inlet side of things. We did see a couple of people out here, some brave storm chasers walking around with their rain jackets, uh, checking everything out. It is not unbearable. I'm not being pushed off my feet by the wind right now. I'm able to stand here comfortably, but rain coming in, definitely kind of biting on the face and you can feel that. Those are the current conditions here at the ocean front all the way up and down the boardwalk. Evan, thank you for that. You know, you just mentioned there were a couple of people down there, but of course we know there are mandatory evacuations in Virginia Beach, voluntary ones as well. For anybody that is out there, certainly since you're in the elements yourself, what would you say to them in terms of getting safe and staying safe out there near the ocean front? Yeah, I would say, of course, just be very cautious of what you're in. Thankfully, this area, I don't see many much flooding on the roads, which can be a danger when you're out driving. The mandatory evacuations, of course, are for Sandbridge, which is farther south to, to my side down here. And then up here at the boardwalk, most people inside of the hotels, a lot of the tourists I talked to yesterday say, hey, we have food, we have water, we're all prepared. We're going to stay inside. We're going to watch it from our hotel room, the generators in there. For people here, just to be cautious and, and make sure that you're close to cover, close to your car if you need to go back but also if you don't need to be outside you know just stay inside stay away from all of this and if you are just make sure to watch your surroundings at all times all right evan thank you very much be safe out there we'll be checking in with you throughout the morning the city of virginia beach may be forcing people to evacuate but they're not leaving you without a place to go neighbors in sandbridge are under a mandatory evacuation because of dorian so emergency management is opening the dam neck gate for people to evacuate to in case roads there flood out the city is also giving options for those planning on staying through the storm. Running two shelters in the city, one here at Old Donation and one at Kellum. Kellum is a, uh, a pet friendly shelter. And the shelter is open 24 seven through Sunday. I just wanted to uh, pull up. Let's see. Let's pull up the power outages maps. Mm -hmm. um, we are on Dominion's website, Ashley, and we, we've seen uh, several hundred in the dark near the Ocean View area, and that was because of that downed tree that Madison was reporting on a little earlier this morning, but also a couple thousand in other parts of the area. Yeah, that's right. The numbers have kind of fluctuated. We've been watching them all morning long. You know, it, they've been in the thousands for a while. They were lower a little bit uh, earlier this morning. At this point, about 6,600 people across Hampton Roads without power. The, the big outages in Chesapeake and appears to be Virginia Beach as well, but we're keeping a very close eye on those outages. We spoke with Benita a little bit earlier this morning. She joins us now again, just talking about the latest and Dominion, uh, or Benita, I should say going back to uh, those outages. I know you all have been working so hard to get the lights back on across Hampton Roads. What's the latest out there? That's right. Well, thanks so much for keeping an eye on that map. And as you look at it, I'm sure you can see the numbers climbing and Dorian is just getting started in our area. We had about 1,600 outages overnight, and our crews worked all night long to get those restored. There was one big one in Norfolk in the Bayview area. Then another one popped up in the London Bridge area of Virginia Beach. And now, as you said, we were seeing them in Chesapeake and in different areas. A lot of times they are the, the most trouble spots are the areas that are most prone to flooding or are very close to the coast or have a lot of trees. Um, we've seen a lot of trees and tree limbs fall, hitting power lines, dragging them down. And um, our crews have have worked hard to try to restore power as quickly as they can. But as the storm kicks up, they will have to stand back until it's safe to go back out and restore power. So we just ask customers to please be patient and know that we are on it. And as soon as it's safe to go outside, we'll, we'll get, get go back outside. We'll be working as hard as we can. We have like 7,000 mm -hmm. restoration professionals coming from 17 different states that are here in town to help us out. So we're in good shape and we just hope they stay safe at home. Yeah, Benita, that was my next question in terms of numbers. How many people do you have on standby? 7,000, that is incredible. So uh, during the peak of the storm, when they're forced to kind of sit on the sidelines, what do you recommend people at home do should they lose power? Well, people at home lose power. The most important thing to do is to report their power outage 
Hopefully they've charged up their phones and they can do it right from their smartphone on dominionenergy.com. Um, or they can call us at one eight six six dom help which is one eight six six three six six four three five seven. And they can also follow on social media to have an idea of what we're doing, what's going on, and what they can, what else they can do at home. And hopefully by now they've already got all the water they need, batteries, mm -hmm. um, non-perishable food, just in case they have to endure power outages for multiple days. All right, Benita, we thank you for uh, chatting with us again. We know you've been between phone calls and some of the staging areas <laughs> for Dominion, so uh, we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Well, thanks for all of your coverage. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, this was before the storm even really started to hit our area. That tree came down in Ocean View, crushed a red Nissan SUV. Now, these pictures are from viewer Danielle Nixon and reporter Madison Kimbrough and our photojournalist out there as well. So if there are any trees down near your house, we do want to know about it when it is safe. You can email your pictures or video to share it uh, on th share it at 13newsnow.com, I should say. You can email us there. You can send it to our Facebook page. You can tweet it to us. You can also share it in the Daybreakers Facebook group. All right, guys, we have a uh, kind of a forecast map. It's an index. It considers the wind, the rain, the different uh, weather phenomena that contribute to power outages and it kind of forecast what we may experience. We just heard from Benita there from Dominion and they have crews ready to go. We're talking about isolated potential, isolated power outages off to the west. Not as much, but closer to the coast, scattered to even numerous as we head later today, especially for eastern North Carolina and close to the coast. So that's just the way the models project the potential for additional outages later today. As of seven o'clock, the center was located 30 miles west southwest of Cape Hatteras, moving northeast at 14 miles per hour. So within the next minute, uh, next minute, next hour or two, it'll be crossing the center of it over Hatteras and then eventually off to the northeast. Our winds are actually going to pick up later as we go through the morning and then into the afternoon. They switch around and that presents some other issues that will break down for you. You can see how that track continues it off to the northeast. Big difference here. We're not looking at a Matthew type situation where it stalls and expands spans and just, you know, dumps rain that just doesn't go away. This is a situation that it's going to keep on rolling and things will improve later tonight. Skies will clear tomorrow. It's going to be mostly sunny. It's going to be warm and muggy, but it's going to be mostly sunny tomorrow. That'll aid in uh, any cleanup efforts that need to be uh, taken around the region. And I suspect there will be some with trees and limbs and different things like that. Flooding issues as well. So here's what we have. The center moving along uh, off to the northeast there. Look at the eye starting to push to towards Buxton right now. It'll be swinging up Salvo, Waves, Rodanthe, some of the different communities that will see that heavy rain as it works up. The uh, northwest part of the eye wall actually over the Pamlico Sound and Ocracoke pretty much inside the most heavy uh, rain with the eye wall there. So it's actually kind of in the eye. I was looking at the distance there, 20 miles. So look at maybe 35 miles across on the eye. So that's the way things are looking. Now I want to talk about what's happening up here. This heavy rain set to roll back towards the coast. We're going to see additional wind and a lot of heavy rain associated with some of that. We're going to get a look at the winds right now with Rochelle. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Currently, we have 32 miles per hour. That's just a sustained wind in Norfolk. Up toward Wallops Island, 29 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour in Currituck, 41 miles per hour in Elizabeth City. The winds in Moyak at 35 and 37 in Duck. When it comes to those gusts, 45 miles per hour in Currituck, gusting to 38 right now in Wallops Island, 43 miles per hour gust in Norfolk, 55 miles per hour gust in Elizabeth City, and 45 for that gust in Moyak. 69 mile per hour winds right now at Hatteras, 74 for the buoy just off of Hatteras. Those uh, the waves right now at 26 feet. So I do want to talk about some wind speeds, some more wind speeds. Cape Henry got up to 57 miles per hour so far as of 7 a.m. Norfolk International, that wind gust got to 48 miles per hour. South Craney Island in Portsmouth, that wind gust up to 44 miles per hour. Suffolk, 40 mile per hour wind. And then at Langley and Hampton, we had that wind at 39 miles per hour. So again, these are just as of 7 a.m. as we go through the morning hours. And these are just for our Virginia counties. I showed North Carolina. I'm going to tweet 
tweet out both of these and you'll find that at the hashtag 13 news now going to send it back over to Craig with an update. All right, and keep in mind, you know, it's still early. We're going to see the winds increasing this morning, so those numbers will be ticking up. I will say so far so good. We didn't have additional tornadoes uh, spinning up since early this morning. Jeff and Evan were here late last night. We kind of high fived as uh, we switched over shifts around two o'clock this morning, so it was a late night for those guys, and they're going to be back to help us finish out the coverage through the afternoon and into the evening tonight, but they were tracking isolated tornadoes around 1230 and 1:30 in the morning. They were down south of Hertford around uh, Coleraine. Uh, we did have at one point there was a debris signature, so pretty good indication that there was something drawing up some debris. So we'll have to wait till everything settles out and go back and kind of analyze things, but we haven't had any tornado warning since. Here's what I want to focus on right now. While Norfolk's seeing light to moderate rain, and we're still hearing it here at the station, the heavier pockets of rain working around Pungo, Colony Acres, and back up towards the ocean front, but this rain off Sure, much heavier and that's coming closer. So while you take a look around Rudy Inlets and Rudy Heights uh, back down through Dam Neck, Sandpiper, you head down farther south, Sand Fiddler Road, it's very intense, the rainfall there. We've got more intense rain coming in around uh, Rodanthe and Salvo. I mentioned that East Lake up to Kill Devil Hills. We have this going on, so we'll continue to deal with issues. I think uh, water obviously flooding could be a concern for that, but then the tides and the wind driven water later this afternoon, Soundside flooding a whole nother issue and we'll break that down coming up. Let's check in now with Phil who has another update. Hey Craig, yeah, let's get to your latest storm mode alert. Here's what's new at the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. It's under a level two wind restriction. That means the maximum safe speed if you're driving out there, 45 miles per hour. We also have this photo in Kirkduck County. Fire and EMS crews say they've safely transported dozens of nursing home patients out of harm's way. This is a picture of a medical bus making that evacuation ahead of the storm. This was actually yesterday afternoon. Glad to see that smooth transition there. Okay, I'll have another update in about 30 minutes. Okay, Philip, thank you. Well, the center of Hurricane Dorian has moved past Wilmington, North Carolina, and reporter Maddie Gardner has the latest on what's happening in Wilmington right now. I'm Maddie Gardner reporting in downtown Wilmington, where it was a long night dealing with Hurricane Dorian. The wind is still the story this morning. You can hear it start to pick up here. We're getting wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour. The rain has since subsided, but the wind is going to be an issue today, and you can see it start to blow these trees around down in downtown Wilmington. The wind is an issue for a couple of reasons. Number one, there are widespread power outages in North Carolina right now, and power crews can't get out and assess the damage and restore that power until the wind dies down below 40 miles per hour, which is not the case right now. So people with the lights off are going to have to stay that way for just a little bit longer. Another issue because of that wind are the bridges. We know many of these bridges connect eastern North Carolina, connect these coastal towns, and those bridges close down once wind speeds reach 45 miles per hour or higher. So anyone who decided to ride out the storm on the beach, they're pretty much stuck there until the wind speeds die down a little bit more. So we're waiting for the wind to die down as Dorian moves up the east coast toward Cape Hatteras in the outer banks of North Carolina. But many people here in down Downtown Wilmington are breathing a sigh of relief this morning, waking up and still waiting for that sun to come up so they can get a good idea of the damage. But a lot of them were anxious. They were on pins and needles waiting to see what Hurricane Dorian would leave behind, especially not even being a year removed from Hurricane Florence last year. And that, there you go, there's that wind. That is what we're still seeing this morning. Wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour or higher still in downtown Wilmington, and Dorian is already making its way out. Reporting from Wilmington, North Carolina, Maddie Gardner. All right, Maddie, thanks. Quick PSA I want to put out there, and this is for folks in Virginia Beach. Because of the storm, their non-emergency line is down. Okay. So they're asking people if you have a non-emergency and you need to call, dial 311. If you have an emergency and you need to call, of course, stick to the 911 route, but they're asking you to save 911 for emergencies only. Now, we've been keeping a very close eye uh, on all of the alerts from the cities, the emergency departments. Uh, a lot of folks have been out there just trying to make sure everyone is yeah. safe at this point. Uh, the very latest with, with Dorian, I know you've been keeping a close eye on that. Yeah, I've been watching the winds and I'm going to show both Virginia and the North Carolina latest wind speeds and also some gusts that have come out so far. Of course, those will are expected 
expect it to climb. But we're going to get over to Craig. He's updating stuff right now, and he has the latest. Yeah, just taking a look at the tide levels because we're going to see the rain, and we're still seeing that uptick in winds that Rochelle will break down for you in a moment. But the bigger concern, again, for Norfolk is going to be the tidal flooding still expected to be major. And I am constantly checking and monitoring the water levels at Sewell's Point. The reason we do that, that is the official measuring gauge for Hampton Roads and Norfolk specifically. So we came through the high tide uh, this morning with an observed height right around, uh, let's see, the exact water level was up around 4.2 or so. That was early this morning. Now the departure, the difference, uh, the water is running about two and a half feet above the forecast height. And as we take you through the afternoon, major tidal flooding expected. And I will show you that in just a second. We take a look here at Dorian in case you haven't already heard still category one 90 mile per hour winds moving northeast 14 miles per hour. The eye basically pushing over Buxton right now. The center will cross over Hatteras within the next hour or so and then it continues off to the northeast. So we'll get into the radar and show you that. But you will note this thing continues to move off now with the winds picking up a little bit later this morning and into the afternoon. We're still looking at a lot of water pooling into the Chesapeake Bay. And then as the winds shift to the north and the northwest, the water that's been coming into the bay is going to push into the lower Chesapeake Bay. And again, this is coming through the afternoon when we have our high tide. So with the afternoon high tide still looking at a 6.7 foot uh, level and that would be major flooding. Some of the worst flooding that we've seen in several years potentially if we hit that level and the forecast is pointing to that. So think about that again. If you're in an area that is even relatively prone to flooding with these big nor'easters or these big events, and you've got a car, you need to move it to a safer location. You can still do it right now, even though the winds are starting to pick up a little bit. There's still time, but the water levels will be coming up as we go through the late morning and then into the afternoon. That's where we're going to get into that major flooding. Yorktown major flooding as well. 5.6 feet again, like Sewell point and as you'll see down in duck, this is going to be a one and done kind of a, a thing with the major flooding. It comes up through the afternoon high tide and then the levels will be much more manageable for the subsequent high tides. So just hang in there. Duck Pier expecting a level around 7.7 .7 feet. That is major flooding down there as well. There's a center again that eye wall coming over Buxton and Hatteras and they're just about into the eye. The center of circulation still down to the south west of Hatteras. It is still moving northeast. So this thing was really well handled by the forecast models as far as bringing it close to Hatteras around eight o'clock. We're very close to that right now. Still areas of heavy rain. I will say areas out to the west, not as much. We said oh, one to five inches potentially depending on how far to the west these heavier bands would come. We knew we would get heavier amounts several inches anywhere three to seven, maybe four to eight here and heavier amounts into North Carolina. So far we're on track with that and as this system pulls to the northeast, we may get some additional expansion, some more heavy rain coming in, so we're going to need to watch all of that. We're also watching the winds, and Rochelle's done a great job all morning of tracking the winds and the forecast. Let's hear from her now. Yeah, good morning, everybody. So right now, calm winds in Surrey and also in Gloucester, but as we head toward Norfolk, sustained winds. This is all I'm going to be showing you with this update. 35 miles per hour for the winds in Norfolk, also in Currituck. We're seeing some stronger winds down into those areas north of the Albemarle Sound. Sustained winds in Elizabeth City at 41 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour in Moyoc, 38 miles per hour right now in Duck. And for our neighbors in Virginia Beach, 26 miles per hour right now. So talking about some of the buoys at Hatteras, 74 miles per hour right now. That is hurricane force uh, sustained winds in those waters at 80 miles per hour, 82 miles, 82 excuse me, degrees and the buoy just off of Hatter 76 miles per hour and that those winds at 26 feet. Oregon Inlet Marina 36 miles per hour, not too far off, but a little bit farther to the north. So some wind speed as of 7 a.m. in Virginia, Cape Henry 57 miles per hour, Norfolk International at 48 miles per hour, clocking a max wind so far at 48 miles per hour in Suffolk 40 miles per hour and Langley Air Force Base on the peninsula 39 miles per hour into northeastern North Carolina. This is Dare County, Frisco 69 mile per hour winds, Buxton at 62 miles per hour, 61 for the Oregon Inlet and Kill Devil Hills. Max wind speed so far at 52 miles per hour and at Nags Head, 48 miles per hour so far. And again, these are only as of 645. As we go through the next couple of hours, that eye and that eye wall going to continue to push off to the north and the northeast as well. So we're going to continue to watch and update these as some of those stronger winds start to push in, Craig. 
All right, thank you, Rochelle. And we are also watching the rain totals going up. You can see this heavy batch here, and I just want to show you this real quick. We'll uh, pull back on just a moment, but this heavy, heavy rain. This is that heavy tropical rain, the stuff that just comes down seemingly in buckets. This is working towards the ocean front. So folks from 264 South, a lot of residential areas here along the ocean front, and uh, you think of around General Booth Boulevard areas down to the south, you are set to get extremely heavy rain working into your area. Obviously, Sand Bridge seeing that and Back Bay as well. Well, so Pungo, we'll see how far uh, back to the west it goes before it starts to slide down. But this is what we're watching. And one area that's really seen a tremendous amount of rain already, areas around Elizabeth City. And that's where we find Tim Pandagis. You're back in our mobile SUV there, the uh, weather lab out there checking things out. What are you finding, Tim? Yeah, we're mobile again, Craig. We're uh, on our way to another location in Elizabeth City. We've heard of a lot of flooded roadways, and uh, we came across another one right here. This is Pelican, uh, Pelican Drive, Pelican Point Drive, actually, and uh, water here probably about a foot, foot and a half, half up on the roadways. Coast Guard Base is pretty much right over this row of houses that's actually on our right side of the vehicle. Uh, so we're pretty close to the base there, pretty close to the waterfront, and uh, just a lot of rain coming on down here. We've seen some wind gusts from our, our weather station here on top of the uh, storm mode SUV, clocking winds over 55 miles per hour and some higher gusts than that. I heard Rochelle uh, in our last hit talk about 60 mile per hour gusts reported in Elizabeth City, and certainly uh, believable. I wouldn't doubt if they've been a little bit higher since that point, too, if things seem to be getting a little bit stronger. Uh, across this area here. But we're going to go ahead and drive around a little bit more, find some more spots, uh, and be mobile here and bring you the latest uh, road closures and things like that with water over roadways as soon as we can uh, find some for you. But we'll, for now, we'll send it back over to you guys. Tim, I know at one point you guys had to stop. You described it as almost driving through a waterfall. Yeah. You had to stop and pull over. Uh, just walk us through that experience. Yeah, so earlier this morning we were on 168. We were coming from uh, the Nags Head area to relocate to Elizabeth City. And at that point, of course, it was still dark. It was like 4.30 in the morning. And it was coming down, the rain was coming down so hard and the wind was so strong blowing debris all over the place that we actually had to stop in the middle of the road numerous times because we could not see out in front of us. It, it was just coming down that heavily, the rainfall. As I said, it was like driving through a waterfall. I mean, it was just the rainfall rates were extraordinary for a prolonged period of time until we finally got to a gas station with some lights. It was like lights in the distance mm. uh, that we could see coming our way, kind of lit us in the right direction. And uh, since then, obviously, the sun's come up, which has made it a lot easier. The visibility is up here now, and rain is not nearly as heavy as it was a couple hours ago. All right, Tim, okay. you got all the tools you need in that mobile weather lab. We'll exactly. talk to you again soon. And we've been talking about the flooding issues that we were going to see in North Carolina, so Tim was talking about that. But back here in Virginia, state police have been working to keep everyone safe all night long. Yeah, jo so, yeah. Joining us now is Sergeant Michelle and Naya. Uh, Sergeant, good having you with us this morning. We appreciate your time. Any issues overnight that we need to know about? Um, no issues. Uh, roadways were clear. We had no problems just uh, overnight. Um, this morning we're starting to feel the, um, the effects of the rain, and that's about it. And um, so far, like I said, um, nothing has occurred overnight, but we're expecting something to occur here shortly. We, I know you've been uh, advising that a lot of folks stay off the roads and with a lot of closures today, it's a little bit quieter out there uh, with the roads for sure. But for those that do have to travel, they can't avoid getting out there. What advice do you have for them? Um, if you can't avoid traveling, we do you know, advise for you not to travel. Um, also remember, we do have a lot of VDOT workers and troopers out on the roadways. Always remind everybody to move over. Um, you know, also know your zone and also be aware of the, the flooding that occurs, especially on the interstate to avoid those areas. Uh, VDOT and state police are working in conjunction to try to, um, you know, um, work with those problems if it does occur on the interstate. Of course, I know you have troopers on the roads. You also have an aviation unit. You have patrol search and recovery teams. Are those teams on standby and where are they located now? Um, we have troopers that are on standby. We have troopers that are working. Our aviation units are um, located throughout the state. Um, our search and rescue team is located throughout the state. They're troopers that actually work the road, and then when they're called to, to come out, they, you know, they come out. So we're located spread out throughout the entire state. 
Uh, really quickly, Sergeant Anaya, for those that might be out there and see something that you all should be alerted to, what is the best way to get in contact with you? Um, best way is pound 77 or contact 911. Awesome. Sergeant Michelle Anaya from Virginia State Police, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll continue to check in with her throughout the day. But 13 News Now is in storm mode. Hurricane Dorian finally here, uh, but weakened to a Category 1 storm overnight. Uh, we are going to have the very latest coming up here in just a few minutes. And the latest on Dorian, that storm continues to make its way up the North Carolina coast. All right, let's get over now to meteorologist Craig Moeller with the latest on Dorian's path. All right, guys, wanted to start off with a look at the radar, where this thing is located. This is our live radar, so I can show you the composite. As a matter of fact, I'll add it on just so you can see how it fills in the uh, south and southeast side of this thing. I'll pull back out there. That's what the hurricane really looks like when you combine all of the radar sites. When you turn off the other sites coming in from North Carolina, South Carolina, all we're seeing is the top half of it. So here's another look. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch that up so you can see. There you go. And as we zoom in, you get this look. Now this gives us the ability to take a look at all different aspects of it. Wind strength, we can take a look at internal uh, change. That was a, a guest appearance from one of our producers and I think our assistant news director. All right, so from Buxton to Avon and uh, back up through Rodanthe, extremely heavy rain right now. This extends up through Wan Cheese and we're looking at very gusty winds as well. You can see from Poplar Branch to Knott's Island, this is the area that I was talking about just moments ago. Corolla now seeing just really buckets of rain coming down. As Tim Panday just described earlier, like driving through a waterfall, getting caught underneath one of these uh, squalls and one of these heavier bands of rain coming in. So Sandbridge south towards Knott's Island, this area really seeing it. Norfolk right now, moderate rain. We've got pockets of rain off to the west and to the northwest, but we knew that this western edge, it was going to be a lot lighter. As the system continues to move off to the northeast, we're going to see things kind of pivoting around a little bit. Still areas of heavy rain for the coast. Let's talk winds now, and here you go. You can see sustained winds getting up there 35 miles per hour at Norfolk. Much lighter winds for some of of our areas off to the north and west, but we're going to see the potential for these winds to tick up a little bit. We were saying, you know, around Norfolk, 30 to 50 mile per hour winds with the stronger winds near the ocean front, and that's a pretty good look right now. That's about where we've been, and we should see the numbers coming up a little bit more. Now, as we go through the morning, we're also going to be watching these uh, wind gusts increasing. We've had gusts into the 50 to 60 mile per hour range down around Elizabeth City and Edenton already. We've had those types of gusts at the northern outer banks. It's been and stronger down to the south. But take a look here. So these are the numbers as forecast by the GFS model. And as the system pulls a little farther to the northeast, we're going to see those winds increase. So when we talk to Dominion, we talk to the emergency managers, Virginia Beach and around Hampton Roads, they say, hey, you know, we're just getting started with some of the worst effects. This is the potential that we could see these winds increasing up to these levels with wind gusts reaching close to 60 for some areas near the water. Higher than that, down to the south, Edenton could see uh, wind gusts up around 70 or so, and certainly southern part of the Outer Banks, some heavier winds as well. This is going to go through the early afternoon, and then notice the wind shifting. That's going to present some other problems. That's why we expect our tide levels to be so much higher this afternoon at Norfolk, and then the potential for some sound side flooding. As we get into the evening, things will improve significantly, and eventually we'll see clearing skies, mostly sunny skies for tomorrow. So we'll have nicer weather for any cleanup that we have following the storm. Again, today, wind and rain increasing, and we're going to watch those tides. The afternoon high tide at Sewell's Point projected to be right around 6.7 feet. That will be major tidal flooding, and it'll be the highest water we've seen in a few years. So just know that's as the forecast is projected right now. Major flooding also in Yorktown and in Duck Pier this afternoon.